Well, I don't know about you, but I could use some comfort food right about now. And this anti-inflammatory soup recipe is not only loaded with anti-inflammatory ingredients, it is hearty, it is warming, it is comforting. It is kind of like getting a hug from the inside. Welcome to the Spicy Apron Cooking Show. My name is Heather, and I am here to show you the easiest ways to get the best results in your kitchen. And this anti-inflammatory soup knocks it out of the park. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't care what kind of diet you follow, whether it's a clean eating diet or a vegetarian diet, or frankly, the good old American, I eat everything and anything diet. This soup will please everyone. But for those of you who are, like I am, following an anti-inflammatory diet specifically, well then, this one is a home run. It is loaded with all kinds of foods and spices that have all been proven to have anti-inflammatory properties. And if you are looking for clean eating or anti-inflammatory recipes, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell because that way you will be alerted every time I come out with a new video every week. So let's get cooking. All right, we're starting with the cauliflower. You've got to peel the leaves off the back and then core the inside. Now, it's not that difficult to do. It takes a little time and yes, sometimes you got to manhandle it, but get that core out of there. Once you do that, peel it into florets. These are large florets. Uh, once you get it peeled into the large florets, then you are going to want to cut them into smaller pieces. Keep in mind you're putting this in a soup, so you want them bite-sized pieces. Once you have your bite-sized pieces, then you're going to want to spread them on a cookie sheet, uh, drizzle a little bit of olive oil, add some salt and pepper, give them a good stir, and then toss them in the oven to roast for about 15 minutes. Next up, the amazing glaze that goes on that cauliflower. It's a couple of tablespoons of honey, you got some white wine vinegar, and of course, some Dijon mustard to round it out. But let's not forget that we're also going to add some spices to it. So we've got some cayenne and one clove of garlic. Uh, just give it a good whisk while the cauliflower is baking. And then when it comes out, you're just going to combine that sauce and the cauliflower. All right, so the cauliflower is completely done and it smells fabulous. I wish you could smell it. And then you're just gonna set it aside uh, because it gets folded into the soup right at the end. All right, here are all the wonderful ingredients that we have yet to get to. Some onion, we've got some sweet potatoes, uh, I've also got some ginger, which is fabulous for anti-inflammation, uh, more garlic, of course, a jalapeno for a little bit of a kick, and some carrots, and of course, fresh lime. Uh, start off with those potatoes. Go ahead and give them a peel. I'm using two potatoes for this recipe. The full recipe link is below in the description box. Now, once you get your potatoes peeled, you're gonna to wanna to cut them into small bite-sized pieces. Uh, here's the way that I have found it's easiest. Just cut them into rounds and then stack them. Uh, and then you can make fewer cuts to get the same number of diced potatoes. You're gonna be doing the very same thing with the sweet potatoes. They are a little bit harder to peel, uh, so have a little bit of patience, but trust me, it is worth it. And same type of deal, you're gonna to wanna to cut them into rounds and then stack them and dice them up. Now again, because they're a little bit harder to cut, I only stack them a couple of rounds high and do it for the entire batch of sweet potatoes. I normally use two, but these were kind of small, so for this particular video, I have three in there. Now, ginger. Okay, everybody says peel it with the back of a spoon. I can't seem to do that. In fact, I'm terrible about that. So I just cut off the skin and then I cut it into thin strips. And once the strips are cut, then I stack them on top of each other and cut them into small matchsticks. 
Now, once they are in matchstick shape, then you turn them 90 degrees and give it a good little bit of a dice. And of course, the jalapeno. Now, first you wanna cut the end off and then cut the jalapeno in half. Now, most people will want to uh, take the seeds out, take the membranes out because that will reduce the amount of heat. So I take most of them out, but I definitely leave some of the seeds in and a little bit of the membranes because I do like some of that heat in there. Once you do that, then it's like the rest. You just slice it into matchsticks and then dice it all up. Now, a lot of people have asked me about the quickest way to dice up an onion, so I'm gonna show you that here. You simply cut off the ends and then peel it. Now, the next part is you're going to slice down vertically, but do not slice all the way to the bottom. Then you give it a 90 degree turn and do the same thing in this direction. Once you have that done, then all it is is just a few more slices and you've got your entire onion all diced up. It's really fast and no tears. All right, with the carrots, I tend to use baby carrots. All I do is just cut them in half and dice them up. You wanna keep them relatively small so they cook at the same rate as everything else. Now with all of those wonderful spices, you've got coriander, you've got cumin, you've got cinnamon, and of course the best, turmeric, fabulous for anti-inflammatory. And then of course you add some salt and pepper. All right, now you're gonna take a hot skillet, add a couple tablespoons of olive oil and that wonderfully diced up onion and toss in those carrots. And give these both a nice stir so they combine, and then you wanna saute them a little bit until the onions become a little bit translucent. And then you add that spicy jalapeno and of course the garlic that we chopped up. There are those wonderful spices that give it not only the flavor, but oh my goodness, the aroma is amazing. And at the end, toss in the ginger, give it a quick stir, then add the vegetable broth. And you wanna combine all of that. And of course, the tomatoes. Now you can do tomato sauce or crushed tomatoes. I actually used crushed tomatoes in that. And then toss in those potatoes that you diced. Uh, also the sweet potatoes, don't forget those. That's what gives it the wonderful color. Uh, and great, great flavor. Give that a stir, and then you just wanna bring it to a simmer and cover the pot partially until the potatoes cook for about 15 minutes until they're tender. And you will know they're tender when you pierce it with a fork and it's super easy to pierce through. Next up, grab a potato masher. You could eat it just the way it is, but I like to take a potato masher and mash up about half of the potatoes. This gives it a great consistency, but also leaves it quite chunky. Now, probably my favorite part is this lovely coconut cream. It is such a great alternative if you don't wanna have any dairy in your food. It makes it creamy and thick and it's a wonderful, wonderful texture, and it also gives it that beautiful flavor and color. And finally, you're just gonna zest a lime, and then you just wanna squeeze the lime juice directly in. And finally, that wonderful cauliflower that has all of those flavors in it, mix it all together, and would you look at all of those flavors and the chunkiness and the creaminess, Put it in a bowl. I'm sorry you can't see through this bowl. It was not a great bowl to pick for this, but top it off with some chopped up parsley for color, and there you go. Dig in. I hope you guys make this anti-inflammatory soup. Happy cooking and happy eating.